to revisit the Ten Laws, which were the soul, are the sole contents of the Ark of the Covenant and the essence of the covenant made by the Almighty at Sinai. Since Yah appeared in fire on top of the mountain and spoke with an audible voice to several million people, we must assume that these are the most important words ever spoken to human beings, since this is the only time he has appeared so concretely that we know of. The Ten Laws will form the basis of judgment. The Ten Laws can be summarized as follows. One, Yah is one, have no other mighty ones before him, includes do not worship Yeshua. Two, no graven images or idols, includes do not worship the Bible. Three, do not use the name of Yah in vain, includes not using God, the Lord, etc. Four, observe the true Sabbath, Saturday, and the feasts and the fasts. Five, honor your mother and father. Six, do not commit murder. Includes do not oppose the death penalty, do not curse, no abortion, no contraception that causes abortion. Do not commit adultery based on virginity and widowhood as set out above. Do not steal, do not bear false witness, includes lying. Do not covet, includes lust. So then how did Yeshua become king and achieve what he did? First of all, he was a 100% human being. If he was not a 100% human being, he would have had no rights on the earth. He was born with a creative miracle that is less dramatic than the creation of Adam or the creation of Eve. He had no human father, therefore there were no bloodline curses. He was the first created spirit. He lived with Yah before coming to earth, so he knew Yah well in Yah's ways and Satan's ways, so he was well equipped. He lived a life without sin, gained victory and regained authority over the heavens and the earth. He became king because humans proclaimed him king. He became lord because humans proclaimed him lord. He became the Lamb of Yah because Yahu Hanan, John the Baptist, proclaimed him the Lamb. Through that assignment, he gained the right to take the place of the animal offerings for sin and thus provide a simpler way to forgiveness. He assigned the body and blood of the Lamb to the bread and wine at the last meal with those who followed him most closely, thereby assigning the body and blood of the Lamb to bread and wine so that all believers anywhere had access to the mechanical ingredients necessary for forgiveness of sin by faith. He became high priest because the high priest laid hands on him in mockery and proclaimed him Messiah, and the blood of the offering fell on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. He became the offering for atonement because his blood fell on the mercy seat. Also the people laid hands on him for transfer of sin and sent him outside the gate and took his blood upon themselves. There's absolutely nothing magical about what Yeshua achieved, not even anything particularly supernatural. He lived a life without sin. That is the most noteworthy achievement. And he died without sinning. And as a consequence, death had no hold on him. And he was automatically resurrected. Death in this life is the price we pay for sin. If we live without sin, we're entitled to be resurrected. Thus far, only Yeshua has accomplished this. And so the position of King of Kings and Lord of Lords is filled for eternity. But through Yeshua's life and death, we have access to repentance and therefore to eternal life. The beast is another name for Satan, one of his principalities. The mark of the beast is a spiritual mark in the forehead, what we think, and in the hand, what we write and contract that breaks the Ten Commandments or honors the Ten Commandments. The pit is a prison into which offending spirits are sent until their period of sentence has been served. In addition to the Saturday Sabbath, we are required to observe Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, which is a set-apart fast day, a total fast. The Feast of Tabernacles, in particular the first and the eighth or great day. Some other important points. Muhammad is also a prophet of the Most High and the Muslims are people of Yah. Allah is the Arabic word that corresponds to Elohim, the Hebrew word for the Almighty. Muhammad correctly rebuked the Christians for worshipping Yeshua and for worshipping the Bible. Islam simply means the worship and service of the Almighty, and Muslim means one who worships and serves the Almighty. Muslims are subject to different covenant terms to those applicable to the children of Israel, and therefore they have to be grafted into the covenant through Yeshua. But this will only happen when the truth about Yeshua is preached and taught. There are other sheepfolds. Yeshua indicated that he had other sheepfolds to visit. I'm aware of one in Central America. There is every reason to believe that there are sheepfolds all over the earth and that there are other religious groupings that have roots in knowledge of Yah and Yeshua. 
there is reason to believe that virtually all human beings today are children of Abraham. The nations of Europe are descended from the tribes of Israel that went into exile. Perhaps the most difficult truth today, I've left it to last because so many are offended by this. Listen prayerfully and carefully. Pray about it. If you're not ready to receive it, put it aside until you are willing to consider it or never. The taking and giving of virginity results in an everlasting covenant. So does sex with a widow or truly diverse, divorced female. A female can only do this once, therefore sexual intercourse is one of the most sacred or set-apart acts possible between two humans. It is possible for a man to take the virginity or widowhood of more than one woman, and since there is no turning back, it is therefore possible for a man to be in lifetime sexual covenant or marriage with more than one woman. Yah has granted mercy and grace, but that grace has been withdrawn. Corrective actions are called for. Isaiah 4.1 indicates that there will be seven times more women than men in the body of true believers at the end, and that is evident today if you look around you. So to sum up, seek truth, not error. Use the technically correct names and terms. Become aware of covenant and the price of breaking covenant. Become aware of and seek judgment in this life. Prepare for judgment at the end. Understand and observe the Ten Commandments. Understand how Yeshua accomplished his purpose. Recognize that there's evil on the earth and seek to overcome in your life. Look for truth in other groups and cease judging them. There are other sheepfolds. Become conscious of virginity, widowhood, and true divorce as set apart states, and the covenant that follows from change of these states. Recognize sexual intercourse as a highly spiritual and set apart covenant act. The necessary consequences of recognizing set apartness of virginity and widowhood. Men can covenant with more than one woman. Refer Isaiah 4.1. Set a clear goal for yourself for eternity. In closing, in Ecclesiastes it's written, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yah and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For Yah will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. If you gain nothing else from this presentation, fear judgment and seek a personal relationship with the Creator and choose to adjust the way you live your life accordingly. A closing prayer. Father, I come to you in the name of Yeshua. I ask you to give me a hunger for truth and seek to avoid error. I ask you by your Spirit to blow away error in my life and show me how to deal with it. I ask you to help me to hold on to truth no matter how hard it may be. I ask you to help me to overcome to the end, no matter how hard that may be. I ask you to help me to build a deep personal relationship with you. Amen.